Great Works 1, Howl. I chose two great works to talk about in this piece. The first being Howl, simply because I adore it. Howl is a very long, long poem. So I am simply going to talk about part one. When first reading Howl, I was struck by the division of, um, of phrases, of stanzas, simply by commas. Now, it's a sentence, I mean, um, it's a poem composed of complete sentences, like, who are expelled from the academies for crazy and publishing obscene odes in the windows of the skull. And you can only tell the end and the beginning of a sentence because each one begins with the word who. Well, the first one begins with I, but mostly every other one begins with who. This one begins with Piot, I suppose. Who. Who, 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 to whom. Later down at the bottom, it's a little bit more difficult towards the end of the section to figure out where the beginning of the sentence is. I think it might just be one long thing here. Who dreamt and made incarnate gaps in time and space through images juxtaposed and trapped the archangel of the soul between two visual images and joined the elemental verbs and set the noun and dash of consciousness together, jumping with sensation of paid or omnipotence I don't know how to do to create, create syntax and measure the poor human prose and sat before you speechless and intelligent. It is a mouthful. It is a big, long, windy poem. But I love it. I really do. I think Howl is one of the best descriptions you can get of the beat poets. If I was going to strive to define just beat poets instead of maybe the whole beat generation, I would use Howl as a definition. That is how huge it is. To look at little sections of the poem, like this, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things is who vanished into nowhere Zen, New Jersey, leaving a trail of ambiguous picture postcards of Atlantic City Hall, suffering eastern sweat and Tangerian bone grindings and migraines of China under junk withdrawal in Newark's bleak furnished room. Wow. New Jersey is not really the best place to be, in my opinion. I would rather be in New York than in New Jersey. Hmm. My family is from Pennsylvania, and it's always a joke made that New Jersey is the armpit of the East Coast. And Newark, especially, is not a great town. This I know. I stayed in Newark, in the airport, really, but for a long time, waiting to go to Germany and to come back from Germany, this previous spring break for my geography class. And let me tell you, Newark is not so hot. It really isn't. But I love this stanza, snippet, phrasing. I love how he talks about the ambiguous picture postcards, the sounds, and the unwritten punctuation. Who vanished into nowhere, Zen, New Jersey, leaving a trail of ambiguous picture postcards of Atlantic City Hall, suffering eastern sweats and Nigerian bone grindings, and migraines of China under junk withdrawal in Newark's bleak furnished room. That inner rhyme happening there between junk withdrawal, Atlantic City Hall, picture postcards, eastern sweats. I, I expect it to be like this really rhythmic bum, 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 bum. And I guess, I mean, it really is. Picture postcards of Atlantic City Hall suffering eastern sweats and Nigerian bone grindings and migraines of China under junk withdrawal and Newark's bleak furnished room. You could really get into it. It's such an easy poem to associate with. And not necessarily by subject, but by sound and feel and emotion. It's so alive. You have the previous two, who talk continuously 70 hours from Park to Pad to Bar to Bellevue to Museum to Brooklyn Bridge, lost battalion of platonic conversationalists, jumping down the stoops, off fire escapes, off windowsills of Empire State, out of the moon, yakety yak yakking, screaming, vomiting, whispering facts and memories and anecdotes and eyeball kicks and shocks of hospitals and jails and wars, whole intellects discourse and total recalls for seven days and nights with brilliant eyes and meat for the synagogue cast on the pavement. That last little phrase, meat for the synagogue, cast on the pavement. Such a, a striking, realistic image to me, being Jewish and thinking about meat, just whole slabs of meat thrown on the pavement. Meat for the synagogue, 
thrown on the pavement. And then you think about how the Beats didn't want religion. They didn't like whole ideology. Just like Kerouac said, mysticism is their religion. So meat, fresh meat, young men thrown onto the ground for their homosexuality, for their drug use. I'm running on reserve battery power. For whatever it could be, thrown on the ground, young men, meat, fresh meat. Ugh. And just all of the sounds and how rebounding, screaming, howling. They are really howling. They talk continuously from 70 hours from Park to Pratt to Bar to Bellevue to Museum to the Brooklyn Bridge. Forever walking and talking and beat, beat on the street, beat, 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 just like the bells, the bells, 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 bells. Ah, it's all of this sound, this inner turmoil of how, just like Jack Kerouac was fighting between his family and his friends, always this battle, this inner battle of the beat poets, so angsty and teenagerish and yet somehow adult and mature, except are they mature, or are they just man-childs, man-children? It's really hard to tell. They are the ones who sank all night in submarine light from Bigford, floated out and sat through the steel beer afternoon in desolate Fugazis, listening to the crack of the doomed hydrogen jukebox. It's all this imagery of, of poverty, really, of poverty, but instead of making it sad, pitiful, and wrong, he's making it I wouldn't say that he's glorifying poverty. I would say he's telling it really how it is. And he's putting the music of bebop, the music of hip-hop and of jazz and of all of that right into his poetry. He's bringing out the music from the streets, making it real and hardcore. Who lit cigarettes in boxcars, 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 bracketing through snow towards lonesome farms, grandfather night. Who studied Polonius Poe, St. John with the Cross, Telepathy, the Bop Cavalot, because the Cosmos instinctively vibrated at their feet in Kansas. It's just this one, two, three, hit, 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 hit and run, hit and move, quick, 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 poetry of Allen Ginsberg and Howl. And Howl, which is too long for me to talk about in its entirety, and it makes me sad. Howl.